first, I want to start with uh, the opening of this book because uh, the introduction really sort of sets the stage for what I want to do throughout the book. And it, is, it, it starts with my husband and I traveling 16 hours, a long flight from South Africa to Washington, D.C. to the inauguration of President Obama. The inauguration was another milestone on the long walk to freedom from unjust laws and their unjust consequences. Activists in the movement, in one way or another, had set, the, set America on the path to this moment by demanding for black people the wholeness of citizenship, equality of opportunity. On that cold January morning in Washington, D.C., I remember the debates I'd had with people who didn't believe they would ever in their lifetime hear a black man take the presidential oath of office. Some of you might be in this room. That's right. But I believed. My belief was born out of that movement's goals and achievements. And as I stood on the grounds of the Capitol among the masses of joyful people of all ages and colors, I could not help but think back to the days of marches and demonstrations in unkind places. Back then, protesters took strength from freedom songs, one of which was how we had come a mighty long way. And on that morning in Washington, D.C., I found myself humming that tune. On the campaign trail in Selma, Alabama on March 4, 2007, Barack Obama acknowledged his debt to the civil rights movement saying, I'm here because somebody marched for our freedom. I'm here because all of you sacrificed for me. And then the line that just blew me away, he said, I stand on the shoulders of giants. He was speaking at the Brown Chapel AME Church where more than 40 years earlier, many of the giants he spoke of were teenagers and young adults. In that sense, they weren't very different from many of the volunteers I saw during Obama's presidential campaign, handing out leaflets, knocking on doors, and shouting into bullhorns. The young volunteers in 2008 worked with the kind of energy and, and enthusiasm and desire for change I had not seen since the days of the Civil Rights Movement. The mood, spirit, and activism I saw on college campuses around the country in that winter took me back to the days when young people poured, it out, poured out of their classrooms and into the streets, marching for freedom. Freedom to be judged, in Martin Luther King's words, not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But there were critical differences, too. While the young volunteers of today may have confronted harsh, harsh words, that was as far as it got. The young people of the movement were confronted not only with harsh words, but with harsh deeds, from brutal beatings and torture, to imprisonment, to murder. <coughs> Waiting for the inauguration ceremony to begin, there were times I had to walk away from other people. As I reflected back on the journey that had brought me to that moment, probably gonna happen now, <laughs> My eyes kept filling with tears that I didn't want to have to explain. Part of my emotion was driven by the thoughts of the ones we lost along the way. Some from racist violence, others like my classmate Hamilton Holmes, who walked into history with me through the gates of the University of Georgia from natural causes. At 54, at the peak of his career as an orthopedic surgeon, Hamp died suddenly of a heart attack. Vivian Malone, who had desegregated the University of Alabama, had a stroke and died at the age of 63. I keep thinking that had they lived, they would surely have been somewhere in this storm, and I miss their presence. But I was also overwhelmed by joy. Back on the campuses I visited in the winter of 2008, I had finished complimenting the students when I had finished complimenting the students for their renewed activism. I would ask them to join me in another song that used to keep our feet in the street until freedom rang. A song that went, ain't gonna let nobody turn, turn me around. around. I couldn't help thinking what a giant step, not just Barack Obama, but America was taking that day, walking up the freedom trail. Barack Obama does indeed stand on the shoulders of giants. Thousands of determined men, women, and young people who blazed the trail for him just as our generation stood on the shoulders of giants like Wilma's father, 
who from the day they were brought to these shores in chains, never accepted the denial of their full humanity, freedom, justice, and rights. How my generation built on that legacy and reached their mountaintops is a remarkable story of faith, perseverance, and courage.